The Santorini Cataclysm is related to biblical accounts. Geologists believe that the explosion on Santorini was the single most powerful explosive event ever witnessed and that this single event is widely overlooked in the historical context of the effects it had on society at the time. Minoan culture crumbled as a result of the eruption, historians believe, changing the political landscape of the ancient world indefinitely. Environmental effects were felt across the globe as far away as China and perhaps even North America and Antarctica. The legend of Atlantis and the story of the biblical plagues and subsequent exodus from Egypt have also been connected to the epic catastrophe which exploded with the force of a hundred atomic bombs, instantly killing many thousands of people as the blast of Santorini was heard over 3,000 miles away. One of the most epic stories in the Bible is the story of Moses parting the Red Sea as the Israelites fled to safety under the protection of God through the guidance of Moses. It strikes us immediately as a miracle, but one group of researchers disagree. They say the parting of the Red Sea was a natural event and it's linked to the tsunamis that were triggered as the volcano on Santorini erupted, engulfing the kingdoms of the Mediterranean in cataclysmic occurrences. The eruption on Santorini is one of the biggest eruptions in the past 10,000 years and only now are we beginning to understand that this is widely connected to other narratives that were described by other cultures at the time. Often simply describing an act of God because they simply didn't know what was going on so the connections can only now be realized. When the waters drew back in preparation for the surge, the Israelites hurried across. The waves roared back in before the Egyptians, whose chariots were trapped and slowed by the wet sand and mud. This is the result of the tsunamis triggered by the Santorini eruption, according to researchers in Spain. Now, we're not saying what we're about to tell you guys is 100% accurate, but what we are saying is that we should be attempting to piece together an accurate overview of the history that's been lost in an effort to properly understand the timeline of the past. Not everything said here is going to be accurate, but only during the process of research are we going to find this understanding. And that's going to involve making some mistakes, and through this process of elimination, we'll hopefully arrive at the truth. So, wait till you hear this. Scientists studying the biblical narrative in the Spanish city of Seville have come up with an alternative answer to the apparent act of God at the parting of the Red Sea. When the eruption happened on Santorini, roughly around 1650 BC, it destabilized the entire region. Reports in Egypt describe structural damage followed by a darkness that could not be lit by a flame, and the follow from this brought temporary climate change that probably had adverse effects on the entire world one way or another. Lava flowing into the sea, landslips, and the subsequent collapse of the caldera generated huge tsunamis that swept the Aegean Sea with waves of 15 meters high sweeping the entire region, leaving sedimentary deposits in many parts of the coast. Even at the faraway coast of Israel, there have been found similar marks of the remnants of a tsunami, which have been dated approximately the same period of the eruption on Santorini. The path of the Israelites guided by Moses is described in the biblical story of Exodus in the Old Testament. As written, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Following this text, the separation of the water should have happened in the vicinity of Migdol, a location that's been identified thanks to various archaeological studies developed in the area with the military fortress of the Way of Horus. This is on the banks of the Shior Lagoon, which opened into the Mediterranean, to the northwest of Sinai. It could be the Sea of Reeds in the Bible. It is for these reasons that researchers at the School of Agricultural Engineering at the University of Seville believe that the reference to the Red Sea parting appears to just have been a reoccurring translation error. Their simulations that recreate the old waterfronts of the area around Migdol support this theory. The reliability of the narrative of the biblical exodus has been subject of heated debate for decades. Recent archaeological studies seem to provide new insight of the exodus path, and although with a still controversial chronology, the effects of the Minoan Santorini eruption have been proposed as a likely explanation of the biblical plagues. Particularly, it's been suggested that the flooding by the associated tsunamis could explain the first plague and the sea parting. Recent modeling studies have shown that Santorini tsunami effects were negligible in the eastern Nile Delta. Historians and archaeologists had trouble deciding on the year Thera erupted, with dates ranging anywhere from 1645 BC to 1500 BC. Studies of ash deposits on the ocean floor have revealed, however, that when the volcano did blow, it did so with a force dwarfing anything humans had ever seen or have ever seen since. The Tempest Steely being a possible description of the effects of the event in Egypt. 
Winds would have carried the volcanic ash to Egypt at some point over the summer, and the toxic acids in the volcanic ash would have included the mineral cinnabar, which could have been capable of turning a river a blood red like color. The accumulated acidity in the water would have caused frogs to leap out and search for clean water. Insects would have burrowed eggs in the bodies of dead animals and human survivors, which generated larvae and then adult insects. Then the volcanic ash in the atmosphere would have affected the weather, with acid rain landing on people's skin, which in turn caused boils. The grass would have been contaminated, poisoning the animals that ate it. The humidity from the rain and subsequent hail would have created optimal conditions for locusts to thrive. Volcanic eruptions could also explain several days of darkness, which means nine plagues are accounted for. Amid all this destruction, firstborn children could have been sacrificed out of sheer desperation in hopes that such a meaningful sacrifice would lead their gods to stop punishing them. The plagues occurred due to the volcanic eruption and attracted hordes of locusts, and there was evidence of erratic animal activity due largely to the alteration of air pressure and water conditions. After the complete devastation of Egypt, the Jews were able to get away in spite of the Pharaoh's soldiers in hot pursuit. In the Exodus, there's a quotation which goes like this, By day in a pillar of cloud, to lead them the way, and by night a pillar of fire, to give them the light. Exodus 13.21 this state of biblical affairs can easily be related to the volcanic eruption at Santorini. The exodus dates back to 1447 BC, but this is by no means an exact date due to the fact that it's an anthology of stories. Historians have said that they have no clue to the pharaoh who ruled during the era of Moses, which in itself is regarded as the most authentic timing of the story. If the Tempest Dili is to be considered, then a more accurate dating of the event can be related to the pharaoh Amos I, which, by the way, Amos incredibly translates as the brother of Moses. Yet in Egyptian, Mos, Moses, Mez, etc. means son of, and Ah is a common part of Egyptian royal names referring to the moon god Aya. The examination of the mummy of Amos' son appears to have died at the age of 12. In the Bible, the pharaoh loses a son to the plague of the firstborn. We'll of course link the findings below for you to go have a look for yourself guys. We're not saying that this is the case and that all the things said here are the truth, but at least keep an open mind to the study of the past. These things, after all, were told after events that happened and the written accounts could be glorified as origin stories. Bits lost here, bits added there, it all makes for interpretation. In any event, we wanted to make you guys aware of the fact that the eruption on Santorini may have been a driving force for many ancient accounts that were associated with godlike activity. We recommend you check out our video on the Tempest Stele of Amos I, and we would love to hear from you, so sign into the comment section so we can gather your thoughts on the matter. As always, thanks for watching.